But I will definitely go over there. I'm not sure if you can shut down my are all the events this podcast? I didn't think that's No, they're not. These are like the last one. Yeah, I was actually like to post that. Um, can we post your stuff? <laughs> Yeah, I'll call uh, uh, I know we've talked about the first yeah. But if IBM has space, yeah. 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 You're, you're live. Uh, yes, okay. You're live. Yeah, what is your Twitter? Uh, L A N Tosman. E L I. A N E T O Z M A N. Let's uh, see what what Lisa will get. Mm-hmm. He get your photo first of all, huh? Ah, exactly. Okay, so, uh, it is nice. Should I put it? Okay. It's already live, but ninety one percent will. Fine level. What about mine? What about mine? Give me, give me your uh, your account. No wait, who was it? Who was it? Go back. Was I, it? I have no clue. No wait, it came up in the end. It came up. Yeah. One second. It's coming up. Oh, this guy. Is it Ryan? Yes. <laughs> you are a man. You are like older man. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even. These tears come out my face. Yeah. Oh, go down. Go down. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Yeah. This one? Yeah, this one. I see you. There you go. There you go. You are funny. You are nice. You are funny. You are, funny. You are nice. Okay. If you'd like to, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody got sandwiches, and there's pizza coming eventually, so 
I figure that if we don't succeed as a data hub, we'll just sell pizza for two bucks a square on King Street and call it a day. So my name is Joseph Guyunas. I'm the data executive in residence for Canada, Canada's Open Data Exchange. I also do various data-related things and programs for Communitech. Uh, no event at Communitech would be complete without a couple of commercials and introductions. So I'm going to talk real quick about what ODX is and what we're doing at the Data Hub. And then Ron from OCD is going to chat a little bit about the I3 program and Ontario Centers of Excellence. And then Eliane will uh, will get into the, the actual meat of it. So Canada's Open Data Exchange is a public-private partnership that was founded about two years ago. Uh, and it was founded based on the idea that governments across Canada had been spending a lot of money collecting data and then trying to release data in, in formats and on portals so that citizens could use it to better understand their government, but also so that companies could use it to create innovation. And ODX was formed to basically help companies do more of that and do it more easily. So we have a team of folks upstairs that design programming and then also work with companies to help them understand what data sets are available and help them either gain access to data that might not be open yet or work with data that might already be released by a province or by the government of Canada, but be messy or wrong or something. So we, we basically sit in between industry and the government of Canada and other governments so that when companies try to find government data and do something with it, we, we make it a lot easier uh, and we help navigate some of that. So we're really happy to partner with Communitech and with IBM and OCE to run these events here at the Data Hub. The Data Hub has been open since April right now. I'm curious, who here uh, in the room, who here is here for the first time for this event? Wow, okay, that's really cool. So it's, it's interesting to see that we're continuing to bring new people in here. I always worry that we get the same 50 people in the room and, and eat pizza and sandwiches and go home, but it looks like we're still, we're still getting the word out. So this is very much your space, as is the Communitech Innovation Hub in Kitchener. We have 20,000 square feet here. We have a mix of startups, scale-ups, and enterprises, as well as tech enablers like IBM, uh, working to help, to help companies start, grow, and succeed. Uh, the companies here tend to be more focused around data and anywhere in the data pipeline, everything from consumer applications that pick up a lot of data and do things with it, to folks that are building APIs on top of that data or applying AI and machine learning to do interesting things and build products on that data. Um, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that excites me. So end of my commercial, now I'm going to briefly introduce Ron Van Holst from OCE. He's going to chat a bit about I3 and OCE and, uh, and then introduce our speaker. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming here today. Uh, I was in this building once before, but they were tearing it, everything out. So it's nice to see it finished. It's beautiful. I'm glad to be here. I missed the announcement of this program it was here, I guess, a week or two ago. I had to be in Ottawa for something else, and uh, I'm going to make up for it by being here today. Uh, Ontario Centers of Excellence is working with IBM and the government of Ontario to bring you this, this program to help you get access not just to IBM technologies to help your business grow and accelerate and be more competitive, but also to help you uh, learn more about design methods that uh, LAN will be telling you about today. Uh, Ontario Centers of Excellence, uh, we are saying more and more just OCE, just know us as OCE. And uh, our vision really is for Ontario is prosperity through innovation. And that's what all our programs are focused on. I'd like, there's a couple other OC staff here. Laura, Sudan, would you mind standing up for a minute? Is there anyone else I missed? Is there anyone else from the OCE team here today? So we, Sudan's here, part of our Waterloo team. Uh, and uh, Laura's part of our small business innovation program that we have with the government. Uh, OCE has a wide array of programs, again, to help you innovate. And so see us here today, not just about this program, uh, but uh, the many programs that OCE has for innovators to accelerate. The government is also calling this program the first of many transformative technology programs. And I'm not able to pre-announce any of those things, but this is the first in a series of things that the, the government is getting behind for innovators to have access to the best technologies in the world here in Ontario to help you innovate. And I guess Sarmad has put up a bunch of the... Uh, Watch the charts, you can all read. I'm not going to walk through that. I have read the chart. I actually have a big print of this on my desk. <laughs> and uh, it's beautiful, and uh, it's all there. So, uh, 
So I think uh, I think that covers it for me. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the programs that we have uh, with with IBM uh, for the for the cloud credits and Bluemix and Watson. You'll be hearing more about that from Sarma. But I think at uh, this point in time, it's just uh, before I introduce our next speaker, uh, there are many components to this program. Uh, IBM is delivering its cloud services. IBM is helping with expertise through its staff dedicated to this program, both technical expertise and business expertise, expertise in design thinking. IBM is also helping with introductions uh, uh, to their clients worldwide. So many uh, I3 projects uh, have been introduced to customers to help them get access to markets to grow their companies. OCE has programs for internships and for customer demonstration projects, and that's been very popular. And then our partners here, like Communitech, will be rolling out customized bespoke business services to help you uh, leverage these programs to the best of your ability. And there's also a soft landing service where we can help support uh, you landing in a IBM innovation zone somewhere else in the world to help you address uh, a market there. So that's the and a very broad brush, the array of programs available under I3, and as I said, under the banner of transformative technologies, we'll be providing access with, for more technologies, more industry partners, more programs in the months to come. At this point in time, I'd like to hand over the, uh, the time to uh, Eliane from IBM to talk to you about the design thinking. The last time we were here, we had some technical problems, but I don't think it's going to happen today. So, um, thanks, Ron, for the introduction. So, who here has heard of design thinking in general? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and everyone knows, of course, I, I, put, I nicely put these uh, little post its and a Sharpie uh, for, for today's session. So, everyone has heard, I don't need to go into too much about design thinking and why it's so important and why we use it within IBM as well. Actually, design thinking, the IBM design thinking actually transformed our entire company um, a few years ago, five years ago. So we really still it. I, we were just in a workshop with all our global leaders to take them through how to transform ways that they deliver their products, how they transform HR, how they transform sales using design thinking and also storytelling. So I'll give a brief overview of that. And also, I like to, um, I like to, when I do this, I really like to have, if you have any questions, stop me as I talk and ask questions. I, this, the way I like to do it is more interactive than just presenting with a bunch of slides. Um, I even like to tell stories because I think storytelling is way more effective and with, sometimes I even have whiteboards. But a lot of people ask, well, what is the difference between IBM design thinking and design thinking? Well, I, design thinking at its core, it's all the same. It's really empathizing with your users and trying to problem solve using empathy as your primary tool. And really going around and, and thinking about the problem much more than just solution. Because in order to come to a solution, you need to really understand your problem. And a lot of people think they understand the problem, but don't really understand the problem. They, they you know, like, some other people will come and it will shadow the person who thinks what their problem is, and then they realize at the end of the day or after a week of shadowing the problem, the person who, who, who come up with the problem, they're like, well, you know what, you thought that was your problem, but it was a little more complicated than that. So, design, I mean design thinking is a human-centered innovation framework that emphasizes observation, collaboration, iteration, ideation. I won't go through it. I'm gonna leave this here. Feel free to take a picture if you want. Um, it really does, uh, you know, it, it really does say what it is. But at the core of design thinking, the idea of design thinking, and this is the this is the nuanced difference, is it? It actually connects people and business by using the design mindset as an instrument for success. And I think that's the real differentiator. It's not just about you know solving problems, but from a business standpoint, from a startup standpoint, from a service standpoint, it really focuses on outcomes, and that's what is the driven motivation of the IBM design thinking way of, of doing stuff. And we also have some core, and I'll get into this a little bit later, we also have some core um, <laughs> core activities, exercises, or things that we do when we employ on top of the, design, the, the, the traditional design thinking framework, 
we have what we call playbox. We have sponsor users, and we also have um, we have hills. And so we have those three things that don't really the design thinking traditional way doesn't have it. A hill is very easy. Um, a hill is what is what explains what you're trying to do. So a hill is a phrase, one phrase, and it has a who, a what, and a wow. If you don't have a who and a what and a wow in order to explain what you're trying to do, you can't tell the story of what you're trying to do. So for example, a really good one that we came up with years ago, a hill is, and everyone rallies around this hill. This is, we mark, it's like, it's like a, you know, who, who has an army background? Who knows a little bit about armies in, in the world? Well, it's the commander's intent. Does anyone know about the commander's intent? Oh, you want to explain it? It's basically where the senior commander goes and says, I want to accomplish a goal, and then communicates that to the people under him who then go and execute and, and pursue that goal. I believe it came from a uh, submarine captain who revolutionized how to, uh, uh, he basically took the worst stuff in the fleet and did the best. Right, exactly. So it's a goal. What it does is it just delivers a goal. It doesn't say how to do it or what methods you should do, you take to do it, but it just delivers the goal. And it's up to the army, to the platoon or whatever, to the submarine, to actually deliver that goal. That's it. A hill could be, take the Normandy hill. Take that hill. That's it. And that's where it comes from. Take that hill during the Second World War. The Normandy, uh, when they came into the shore, was one of the most successful deployments in during the Second World War. That was a differentiator. That's how, uh, uh, you know, the, the good guys won the war, so to speak. Um, and there's many more factors. I'm reducing it to the bare bones, but anyway. So we believe that because of the, the power of this commander's intent, that in order to explain to everyone what we're trying to do, you need to have that hill. You can't just be in a, in a glass box and just say, use all these acronyms and these long stories and lose people's interest because people will not know what you do. Startups, businesses have this, and we do it, I do it, I'm, you know, we have this. Uh, we have this thing where we want to explain everything. We want to give. We want to give. Um, you know, examples, and we go on and on and on and on and on, and we don't stop, and we lose people's interest. The hill consists of probably one sentence, two, one paragraph. The hill can be. Um, we want to deliver. Uh, John, the data analyst, needs to deliver data to his customers. <coughs> in real time in under one second. Now, that's a pretty powerful statement because you're, del you're delivering real data in less than a second and it keeps updating, especially in the financial world. So what you're doing is you're gathering all this information, you're delivering it so that people can make an analysis in real time. That's a huge thing. And when you tell that to people who are in the financial business, they'll understand it right away. You're like, wow, that's amazing. This is a differentiator. A playback is when you actually play back the work that you're trying to do, the service, the product that you're trying to deliver, and what you're doing is you're playing it back. Sometimes we do sketches, we do little theater pieces, we do drawings to play back what we're trying to do. Playbacks align everyone together. Because it's not only about your customer, it's also about your stakeholders, your investors, people who you work with. If they're not aligned with what you're trying to accomplish, it doesn't matter if the delivery is for the customer, everyone has to be, everyone has to understand what they're doing. So that's a playback. Another one, of course, is um, the hills, the playbacks, and then we have uh, what we call um, the loop, and that's called the loop. It brings it ev everything together. So, sorry, I have. All right. So, sorry, let me just. No, I don't, I don't have any other choice. Sorry, I have a, this happens all the time. So, what is the difference between disruptive innovation and disruptive technologies? As Ron was saying, we as a company, our biggest now is cloud computing and watts and artificial intelligence. But we really believe that these are just tools. If you don't understand really what you're doing, because you'll never be able to accomplish it. It's like a hammer. Disruptive technology is like a hammer. But in order to really drive innovation and disrupt, because that's what everyone is doing, they're trying to disrupt markets and services and new ways of interacting with technology. And I'll get more into that. 
It's, um, it's design innovation, not technological innovation, that causes disruption. And I'll give you many examples of some of the most successful companies today. They actually used design innovation and not technical innovation. And for example, I don't know if any of you know, but Steve Jobs, when he first came up with the iPhone many years ago, iPhone 3, I think it was, um, he had designed a concept of technology that didn't even exist. He had to wait three years before actually launching the iPhone onto the marketplace. The screen technology didn't, it didn't exist. But he designed the iPhone. Moreover, the mobile market was completely oversaturated. But he didn't care because his differentiator and his disruption was the fact that he had this screen and he had this OS system with simple to use and the apps and so forth and so on. He completely revolutionized how we engage with mobile uh, technology. So this is really, we believe in this at IBM. This is how we do it. Technological innovation is a means to use engineering knowledge to create new processes and products. And design innovation is a means to use design thinking to create improved experiences using available technology. At its core is you're thinking about the experiences you want to deliver, and then you select the technology that will enable you to deliver those experiences. Design thinking at its core, empathy, problem solving, and creating better experiences. It's not the coolest app, it's not the coolest technology, it's the experience that you want to deliver to your customers. And that is what is most important. At least we think this. Using technology to tell a story. So I don't know if any of you are aware, this is another little tidbit. This is my, one of my favorite stories, because I like, I like to know why this is a great little story. Um, cell technique was actually invented in 1917 by Earl Hurd. And what he did is he was so gung-ho about this technology that he created, but he wasn't telling the story. So he was not successful, and he actually, um, he actually lost his company and became bankrupt. But he actually invented cell technology. He invented cell animation. 20 years later, in 1937, um, someone known as um, Walt Disney came in and used cell technology, cell animation, to tell a story. And that was Snow White in 74. Because he was focused on telling the story and leveraging technology that existed over the past 20 years, um, Snow White. In 1937, Imagine, with initial earnings of $8 million, became the highest grossing sound film up to that time. That is huge. And it goes back to the whole fact that you're using design story, you're focusing on the experiences that you want to deliver to people. If you focus on the experiences you want to deliver, you're going to be much more effective. Disruptive companies. So these are, these are the types of companies, actually, that focused, that came onto the marketplace, and I won't go too much into it, but feel free, like I have, there's little anecdotes on all these companies. Netflix, for example, their disruption or their innovation was design center. They used design thinking to actually come up with the ideas. They disrupted Blockbuster. Blockbuster was focused on the fees, the late fees that they accumulated. They were highly successful. Netflix came in and said, you know what, we're not, we're not going to charge anything. We're going to offer, we're going to streamline entertainment free of charge anywhere, any place, at any time. And now they're actually producing um, content, which is huge as well. Travelocity, before this, you know, all travel companies you had to go through, um, you had to go through a travel agency. You had to go into the travel agency, and you actually had to rely on this one person. In came all these great travel, online travel forms, and you can actually read, it was very social. You can read reviews, this place is great, these hotels are great. Completely disrupted the way we travel. Google, um, iTunes, of course, iTunes came, came from Napster, eBay, um, Amazon, and Pixar. Pixar is focused on creating great experiences as well. These are all companies that focus on great experiences. Now, there's two companies that I want to share with you. Um, these stories are these are these stories are great stories because these stories started very small. What they did is these two companies, Uber and Airbnb. Who has not heard of Uber and Airbnb? I always use these companies because everyone knows them, but there's a um, star man is going to go into uh, case studies of smaller companies that have used this methodology. What they did, Uber, for, for instance, was focused on, <clears throat> they came into the marketplace in 2000, they started in 2010, and what they did is they actually focused on delivering black car services to Wall Street executives at 5 o'clock. That was it. Because prior to that, when they finished their day at 5 o'clock, there was no taxi. And they couldn't, they were waiting hours. So 
Uber came in and said, you know what, we're going to offer this service where they can actually have black car service, uh, black car service at the touch of an app. And from there, it expanded. Airbnb, does anyone know how it started? Two people, three people. Who wants to tell the story then? Okay. Yeah, it was uh, these guys that had a disability in the apartment. They tried to rent it out. So that's what it was tried to put on the apartment. It, 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 yeah, it's actually way more interesting than that. Yeah. Sorry? Yes. 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 Bed and breakfast air mattress. That's what it stands for. <laughs> And actually, it was even more interesting than that because it was two design students living in San Francisco who came from the Midwest who could not afford their loft anymore. They had rented, overpaid this huge loft. They really wanted to you know, be like the San Francisco lifestyle. They had, rent, they had rented this huge loft. And they realized at the end, oh my God, we can't pay for this. So they came up with an idea, these two design students, they ideated around it, and they were trying to solve a problem. And what they did is they put an air mattress in their living room and invited people advertising on Craigslist. And that's how Airbnb, Airbnb was born. Focusing on very small, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? It was also for because there was lots of design conferences happening in San Francisco, and the students who came in could only afford the furniture, they could not afford staying in hotels. So it was an alternative, a cheaper way, a more personalized way to invite people to come to your home. 20 years, 10 years ago, if you were to said to people, you can stay in people's houses, they'd be like, what? The concept is so crazy. 10 years ago, if you told someone that you can use an app to order a, a, a cab, you don't need cash, you don't, you don't need to wait at the corner. I mean, that, you know, you would never have thought of that. But these people focus on very particular problems that they were trying to solve, use design, and it was, it was it was an experience that they wanted to deliver to the people. It wasn't technology, it wasn't any of that. And in group, extremely successful stories. And Stormine will actually tell you more successful stories as well. Good ideas. Um, <clears throat> what is the nature of design innovation that has the power to disrupt industries? Well, because, as I said with those examples, IBM Design Thinking always starts with asking, what are the problems you're trying to solve for your users? Since they are your North Star, we at IBM believe now, we all believe this, that the core of, of everything is starting with your customers, <laughs> delivering exceptional customer experiences. So design thinking, how does it apply to uh, designing for disrupt innovation? I like that little bird, I'm <laughs> sorry, I like the little bird that comes on. Anyway, I was playing around with it. So, um, so two day workshops, what does it do? We actually have, uh, this is an example, a real example, a real, a real use case that we, that we did. And what we did is we built this two-day workshop around how we're ha trying to solve autism in, the, in, the, in Vancouver. This was a few years ago. So what did we try to do? We tried to build a common understanding of a company's uh, current com uh, problems and identify key problems from a wide range of perspectives. So you're really looking at it from all the different perspectives. At this workshop, we had in the room, we had uh, parents who had autistic children. We also had autistic children in the room itself. We had social workers, we had doctors, and we had researchers all together trying to problem solve how to deliver more effective services to autistic children and their families. In BC, I don't know if you know this, but uh, services are not free of charge. It costs an exorbitant amount of money, and a lot of people can, uh, can't afford it and that we were trying to lower the costs. So at the end, understand the, the, the needs of the customers that they're trying to target, understand what types of potential benefits would be for achieved for your customers, what is the differentiator, what are you offering? So through this two-day workshop, we really came down into its knowledge transfer. It's actually identifying the, 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 the possible that when your baby is six months old or nine months old, is the ability to understand that your child is different start from there and that was that was the outcome it was as simple as that but the only way we were able to do that was to get all these different perspectives because everyone got aligned and we continuously did playbacks we were playing back things that we came up with because it was teams of five people in the room and they all did their ideation they all went through a design thinking workshop <laughs> and i'll go through that in rapid fire because we only have two hours um what we do in terms of our workshops of uh, 
of course, with two days. So <clears throat> it's a framework that helps solve problems in complex environments. Things are complex, and I'll go more into that. Focuses everyone's thinking on the user experience. It encourages cross-functional collaboration and fast iteration. Um, and I'll give you many examples, but fast iteration and collaboration is a key thing. Why, do we, why is it so important today? Because the technology landscape is changing rapidly. Cloud, cognitive, mobile, um, big data analytics, they're changing at such a rapid pace, so much so that LinkedIn doesn't have enough time to, to host new job postings. <clears throat> new job postings come up every single day, and LinkedIn doesn't have enough manpower to host those new job postings. Because what happens is that they have different titles, there's different things. Like someone asks, oh, do you know uh, this person who has, uh, who, with this title, I've never heard of that title, right? And things are changing much fa at a much faster rate than ever before. Because of cognitive, the artificial intelligence, because of the cloud, we can store everything on the cloud. And because of everyone's use of mobile devices, and I'll get more into that. This is really important, and I, I apologize if I'm talking really quickly, because I have a lot to go through. But just tell me to stop and slow down a minute. The demographic landscape is changing rapidly. Um, why is this important? Because the millennials, it's a segment of the population. Uh, I see there's some millennials in here. Um, there's some, millennials are really important. They're the largest uh, demographic uh, segment of the population since the baby boomers. So you have one know about the baby boomers. They actually transformed a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that came out. People are saying that baby boomers were the most successful. Well, now they're saying that millennials are also in the same range as that. Who are they? They're actually the first generation that was born in the digital age. They were born on most of the mobile devices we're in. My generation, I won't say how old I am, but I was not, I had to use Vax2. Anyone know Vax2 when I was in university? Vax2. <laughs> and I was so excited about my Vax2 again. But I had to know lines of code, and I didn't know any code. Today, if I were to ask a millennial to do to go on a Vax2, they'd be like, are you kidding me? They would just leave. It would be like, no, it's just too much work. I'm not using facts to it. When I was in university, oh my god, I couldn't stop. I, was like, I can reach all these other universities. I can do all my research. It was amazing. I was so excited. But anyway. So one in four are interested in becoming entrepreneurs. The baby boomers, of course, were not like that. 95% use their smartphones to shop, read news, and socialize. Why is that so important? It's because everything we do is on our device. Everything we do is on our device. 71, um, 78 percent of millennials feel that innovation is essential for business growth. Why is this all important for everyone in the in the workforce? Everyone who has businesses or are working with businesses, why is this so important? 75 percent of the workforce will be millennials by 2025. We cannot ignore this this segment of the population. We cannot ignore them. They are the people who we're going to report to. They're the people who are going to make differences in everyone's lives. People like to make fun of them, but they shouldn't. Um, you know, we all, like my generation talks jokes about the morning, but like, kind of no um, And there's also a lot of uh, debate in terms of what that generation counts for. Some people say it started in 1980, all the way to 1996. Mm -hmm. Some people start, say it started later, but this group is, is vastly important. And it's not only North American, Thing, it's actually all over the world. It's amazing. It's almost like everyone decided to have children at this time, all around the world. It's not just North America. It's Europe. It's China. It's India. India has some amazing statistics, actually, as well. So the leisure landscape is changing. If if you look at this, is how we interact with technology is changing. You know, the iWatch. Um, this is a thermostat. That's a really interesting thermostat that kind of tells you, hey, your, your house is overheating, you may want to close your, shut down your, uh, your heating system. It's an interactive thermostat. So the world is becoming rapidly more digital. And why is it becoming, why we can't ignore this? It's because what the expectation is today is the last best experience that anyone has anywhere becomes the minimal expectation for the experience they want everywhere. That's one of my favorite, favorite quotes. And this is true, and we see it as being very seamless. We're like, okay, I, every touch point, every digital touch point today, it's like a no-brainer. But 10 years ago, digital touch points used to be way more complex. 
extremely complex. You actually have to have a technical background in order to engage with technology. Today, you don't. Anyone can engage with technology. 89% of companies believe, this is 89% of companies believe that customer experience will be their primary basis for competition. In 2011, that number is 36%. This is a Gartner report actually published in 2015. I bet you today it's about 95%. So in order to actually, and, and all big companies, small companies believe this, and this is what we try to teach our startup, our startup communities in Canada and Ontario specifically, is we want them to think not just about the technology they're going to use, and Sarma can have some really funny stories to tell you, but we're actually trying to teach them that they really need to think about the experience that they want to deliver with their service, their product, whatever they're coming up with, focus on the experience. That will be your different differentiator. And that's why we go around together, Starmat and I, and we actually uh, talk to startups and scale-ups and really try to make them focus on that instead of just the technology. Because technology is just a tool. 2019%. Major changes in demographics and technology experiences have driven expectations much higher. My value index designed by companies outperformed the SAP 500 by 290%. There's a great little anecdote. Who has heard of who has not heard of Shopify? Okay, everyone's heard of Shopify. You know, Shopify is a Canadian company, right? I think it was, it was started here, wasn't it? I think Ottawa. Ottawa, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I come from Quebec, you know. <laughs> so I'm gonna be nervous there. Um, so uh, Shopify was a great story that I actually I was talking to um, I was talking to the to the founder of Shopify, and he was telling us uh, in a room it was a really great uh, a great story. He's a very soft spoken man, but he said that had they focused on the customer experience from the get go. They wouldn't have. They would have been much more successful at a much faster rate, and that was his biggest regret: is not focusing on the customer experience they want to deliver. He was just focusing on the technology, and now they're playing catch up. And there's a lot of. There's just, I mean, that's just one example. Um, I, I know sometimes I, I, I bring in other examples, but I don't because we are here. I'm not going to go too much into it as to why companies have failed, because they were not focusing on the um, uh, on the customer experience they want. They weren't listening to their customers. Apple, if you don't know this, every single Apple employee presents themselves with their with their business card as a customer experience, and then their title. The first title is customer experience. That's what they're focused on. So we have a partnership with them, and every time I meet an Apple uh, employee. I, I know what we do. I'm a customer experience. I'm a, I'm a customer experience person. I'm like, okay, well, what do you do? Okay. <laughs> what is really your job? No, no, that's what I do. I go into places and I ensure that people are having the best customer, the best experience with our products ever. That's all we do. And he's like, I really don't care about anything else. I'm like, okay, that's great. So there's one key. There's one. Uh, there's one key to our future growth, and that's the customer experience. Ginny Rometty uh, actually said this uh, when she first uh, became CEO of her company over five years ago. And so she says, and you know, she, and, and this is true, like I, I've met her uh, uh, once, is pulling other leaders to accelerate the pace of change value, but she said, design thinking is at the center. Every single transformation that IBM has gone through in the last five years because Ginny has been centered around uh, design thinking. So since she came into as CEO, we have hired over 2,000 designers. And it's, it went from about 200 designers to 2,000 designers in the span of two years. And because of that, we were able to disrupt the HR system within our own company because we were not able to hire them fast enough. Before hiring an IBM took a, a standard of five months. Because we wanted to get the best designers in, we had to minimize, we had to reduce that time to two weeks. We had to put an offer and a map into their hands in the span of two weeks. And that disrupted how we actually um, hire people at IBM today, just because of that. Um, so what is our mission? It's to create a global, sustainable culture of design and design thinking at IBM. It's our core. Everything we do, every employee at IBM has gone through a design thinking session. Um, myself, personally, um, I, have, I have conducted over 1,000 workshops across, uh, across the world, including when I was working uh, with products 
for um, Antoine's role at, uh, at I3 and OCE. So the practice is very simple. It's just shift from engineering-centric to user-centric. And we had gone through that prior to this. Prior to the arrival of, of Ginny, we were much more um, we were much more design uh, you, you, uh, engineering focused. So I'll give you a really good example. Everyone has a, a sharpie and a, and a post-it. Does everyone know why we use sharpies and post-its? Why are we not thinking? This is a great story, actually. Um, a sharpie is big, fat, and uncomfortable. And you can't go, and I, I urge you to do this, if you don't believe me. Because you have to actually be very careful in terms of how you use it, and a post-it is small, so you have to get your ideas, everything packed into this one thing. You're forced to reduce it to the minimal thing that you want to say. With a pen, you can write really, really small. With a Sharpie, you can't. And that's why design, there's a whole bunch of research that, that's around us, and that's why we use Sharpies and post-it notes to do all these exercises. So everyone take up their um, their Sharpie and, and post it. And I want you to draw, take two minutes and design a bridge over a river. Design a bridge over a river. For those who don't have Sharpies and pens, I think that'll be nice. I'll go around. Does anyone not have it? Too much to do because you have a sharpie. So you have to be very to the point. It's just the bridge. Yes. What does the bridge carry? What does the bridge carry? Cart. Good question. No trucks. No, it's a really tough one. Trucks too. Where about going to Moxa? I love it. Good. Um, Here, you want to go? Anyone missing? Okay. So who has who needs more time? Hopefully it's two minutes very fast. Now I, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take that little post-it and throw it on the floor. This is the one time you can actually lose. One time you can throw it. We, the other day I had a bunch of students do it and they just threw it across the room at each other. I know never to do that again. <laughs> All right, so now, with a fresh post-it, even a different color if you like, take two minutes and design, draw, a better way for people, trucks, people, if they're driving, if they're walking, if they're on bike, bicycles, the mode of transportation doesn't really matter. But the focus here is a better way for people to enjoy getting from one side of the river to the other. Enjoy better one side to the other, those are key elements. So come up with a way, it can be anything. Now everyone has to do this exercise, because this is a fun exercise. You can use your imagination. Design a better way, draw a better way for people to get from one side of a river to the, to the other. All right, does anyone need more time? Okay, so can, who wants to share their ideas? I love this, I love hearing the video. Okay, go. Rope swing. Rope swing, I love it. Like zip lining. Zip lining, uh, yeah. that always comes up. Well, <laughs> 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 I've never wondered. Who else wants to share their innovation there? It's a big river, so the raft was able to share the top of the river. <laughs> <laughs> there's always, there's always a big, 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 big boots. Yeah. Glass railing for better view. 
Nice, I love that. Anything, anyone else? Yes. A transporter. A transporter. A helicopter. Right? Helicopter. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jumping across the rocks. Yes. Yeah. Floating deck. Floating deck. Yes. Sorry. Wading pool. Oh, a rail. Nice. Yes. Car wash. Car wash. <laughs> yes. Transparent floor. Transparent floor. Yes. So you can see down. Yes. Oh, I love it. Nice. So. Can anyone tell me what the difference between the first exercise and, the, and this exercise? Up here. Sorry? It's more data. More data. <laughs> yes, okay. There's more data. Yes. Well, the first, the first exercise dictated what you had to design. Well. Right? Because you said design a bridge. Right. Right? right. Well, this is an experience. Right. So the fact that designing a bridge is a solution of a product. Design a better way by using those words for people to get you're still the same thing. It's actually trying to connect one side to the other. But because you focus on the experience, we're able to innovate. Innovate. That's the key thing here. You came up with innovation, revolutionary ways of people to get across. Imagine if we focused our imagine if we focused just on creating those experiences instead of just products and services and solutions. We're so hardwired to focus on solutions. All the time, even engineering school. Who would be an engineer? Engineers, you know, you guys, you are all, you know. I know Ron is one too. Is you're focused on creating solutions for people, but if you actually, even in engineering, as you focus on creating better experiences, we can be the most fantastic world, of, you know, coming up with such revolutionary ideas of how to engage people and for them to have better experience, even crossing over a bridge. I'll give you another example. So if you focus on the coffee pot, you'll just come up with a regular coffee and that's it. If you focus on creating experience of delivering the coffee like this, I'll give you an example. Folgers, um, many years ago, came up with this, um, uh, this ad and not at one point did it actually show the coffee. All they did was showing people waking up to the smell of coffee. And after that ad aired, sales of Folgers went up by 200% because it was focusing on the experience people had with coffee rather than that. Starbucks entered the market, oversaturated market, coffee marketplace in the world. They're off in, the, in, the, in Seattle. What they focused though was creating an experience for people to enter and engage and drink their coffee. I personally think Starbucks is gross. Um, I don't think it's great coffee, but it's extremely, extremely successful because it focuses on personalization and the experience people have. You walk in, you have the barista, they're friendly. They put your name on the cup. The fact that they actually put their, your name they personalize it and then they give you the coffee is revolutionary. Before, no other coffee place did that. Um, so design, design is a noun, it's a beautiful, I think it's a great term. It's a beautiful word, it's actually a noun and a verb. And the purpose is, is planning or intention that exists behind action, fact, material, object. Everything is designed. If you design this, you design the walls, you design the couch, you design the chairs. Some of the most beautiful chairs in the world, the Eames, uh, um, the Eames Ray, uh, Ray, Ray and Charles Eames, they designed some of the most beautiful chairs. J, uh, Arnie Jacobson, beautiful chairs. These are all designed. But they designed experiences. They focused, why these, these furniture pieces, they focused on designing chairs to create a better experience for people. If you look at the egg chair from Arnie Jacobson, it's, it's very much designed to create a nice space for people to sit in. Um, so the bike, here's the same thing. If you focus on all this, focus on the handlebars, you'll never really create a revolutionary way for people to bike. However, you focus on this, and a lot of bike companies actually around the world are now focusing on creating a better experience, not focus on, you know, the spokes, the, the chains, so on and so forth. So right now, in the last 10 years, bicycles, uh, both uh, racing bicycles and mountain bicycles, have come a long way. It's a huge way, a huge like it's 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 incredible. If you think about um, even kitchens, uh, I'm in the midst of uh, renovating a kitchen, and it was amazing. I went to this kitchen store, and there was actually a mechanism in place so when you close a drawer, it doesn't. It's soft, so it's like a caddy. Before you just shut a door, and it was a thing clang, clang, clang. Now they've removed all that. Now when you shut a cupboard, it's like this really nice soft thing. 
You don't even hear anything. You don't even have handlebars anymore. It's just, you know, like it's out and it opens. Right? Even, you know, with, with um, some of these products, you know, the home devices, uh, the Internet of Things, you walk into a house and you can open up all your lights. You don't have to switch anymore. There's so much you can do. And all these revolutionary things that you do is focus on the experience rather than on the technology. Human beings, and why is this so important? If you're in, if, wherever you, whatever you do in life, why is this so important? One thing to keep is human beings are often powered by emotion, not just reason. We're emotional human beings. What are some examples? Look at this. Remember, remember this? Now Dyson came up with the dryer. You put your hands. I know people always say, but the bacteria, they fix that. So now it's not so bad. Um, you know, Uber, I gave that example. Now you have Uber. Even how you pay, you can play with a watch. I mean, this is revolutionary. Uh, it's becoming more and more pervasive. Even security. Uh, now we have a touch of with our iPhone. We can have, and it's so much easier. I mean, before you have to type everything in, you have to remember your passwords. I think I have 50 passwords in total, but I always, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at security. I always use the same ones. Over and over, I have seven that I go through with everything. It's bad, I, know, I shouldn't tell that story. So. Uh, what are the principles of the principles of what IBM design thinking? As I said, it's the, the playbacks, uh, the sponsor users, and the hills. So we, the principles that we use is that we focus on user outcomes. That we, we engage with diverse and empowered teams. Uh, a few years, many years ago, we focused on creating an, an application text-to-speech. We had gone to a workshop, and we had invited an opera singer to be part of that workshop. Why an opera singer? Because they use their voice as that is their bread and butter. So they were able to offer extraordinary amount of insights in order for us to come up with a better product. So what we do is the loop, as I said before, we observe, we reflect, and then we make. It's a loop. We keep doing this loop. First we observe. Remember I was telling you at the beginning, we shadow people, we ask them questions, we do ethnographic research, and then we reflect to bring all this data, as we were saying, bring, bring, bring the data back. And then we actually make, and then we do go back again. We test it out into the marketplace. Hills, plays backs, and sponsor users. Sponsor users are actually what they are. For us, they're our customers. Whenever we come up with a new process, a new tool, a new service, we bring in uh, sponsor users, and their customers are actually use our product or our services. And they're part of, they're actually, we, we have them part of the whole beginning, middle, and end. They're, they're actually our partners when we create new stuff. And I can give you many examples if you're interested um, in my past uh, role. How does it work? Areas of focus. So this is a, a, a case study that I, a brief one. I'll, this is when we came up with Watson Oncology. Watson Oncology actually was developed in Toronto first. And what we do is a partnership between Sloan Kittering in, in Boston. And what we did is we actually went in and we interviewed oncologists, social workers. We interviewed a whole bunch. We did ethnographic research. We went in and we asked questions. What do you what do you do? Because we want to create a product and service that they would like to use. Without having engaging with these people, we wouldn't know what exactly what they want, what are their what what keeps them up at night and what allows them to wake up in the morning. And then we do structured interviews. We interview this is actually a hospital for sick kids. We actually interviewed um, we interviewed oncologists. Um, this is one of, this was one of our interviews, and then we, you know, we reflect. Okay, based on everything that we did, we reflect, and then we actually make. So this is this is really important. This is what the workshop I was telling you in the beginning. First, what we do is we do all that at the, at the forefront. We do all we gather all the research, all the data, and then what we do is we bring people into a to to even a week long workshop, and we create empathy maps. So we empathize around our user. The user would be the oncologist in this case. And then we create as a scenario maps. What is the steps that they're taking today, and where can we fix it, right? We actually hone in on the pain point. Where, can, where in what area of the phases and steps could we improve the most? Um, and then what we do is we come up with ideas to fix that pain, or to, to enable to us design that opportunity. Where there's pain, there's always opportunity. And last is, this is all focusing on the problem. So the empathy and then the as a scenario is the problem area. And that's, just, that's, the, that's coming up with ideas, not solutions, but ideas of how to fix the problems. Again, it's all about um, ideas, never solutions or features. 
And then we ask ourselves, well, in terms of priority, does it have how much of an impact and how feasible? You can have the most incredible idea in the world, but if it's not feasible, it's going to take too much time to design. Um, I don't have everyone on board. My customers don't like it. You, you don't do it, even if it has a huge impact. The hills. Then we have we, we actually focus on the objectives. The, the hills are the objectives. It's the who, the what, and the wow of the great idea that we came up. It explains that idea in human-centered terms. And then we storyboard out the future state. We create swim lanes. You know, storyboards are why the stories are so important because it, there's a beginning, middle, and end. There's resolution, there's conflict, there's all of that, and we tell that story. And that's how we create our, our design thinking workshops. Again, then we make. So at the end of the day, going back, this was the treatment. This is what we came up with, uh, Watson Oncology. And it's very, very minimalistic. And it's also, yeah, it's, um, it's a solution that can fit on any device. That was really important for oncologists. I don't know if you were all aware, very uh, aware, but oncologists have huge egos. They don't want to tell people that Watson actually gave them the suggestion. They, they're the ones who want to deliver the diagnostic to the patient. So they kind of hide Watson in the background. Um, today, Watson Oncology is used around the world. It's one of our most successful artificial intelligence um, um, products that we have on the market. And as you can see here, it's not giving the answer. It's actually what it's determining is a 95% confidence rate. It's not the treatment. Nowhere does it say it's this treatment plan one. There's a 95% conf confidence rate in it. We used wording very selectively. It was very, it was very precise in terms of what would be the best of how to deliver the, the information. And then we gather user feedback. And this is a, an example of how we conduct our workshops. It's very messy. We have boards everywhere. We have stuff. Um, this is one of our studios in, in Austin, Texas. And then we make, and that's how we do it. And what this does, it actually reduces the, the uh, it actually reduces the whole notion of fail fast and fail often. If you employ these tools, observing people, doing the research, empathizing, understanding what the problems are, coming up with ideas rather than solutions, you'll avoid failing fast and failing often. And that's one of the biggest, um, that's one of the biggest killers in the startup space. So let's get to work. So I'm going to show you today what we're going to do is we're going to, um, so the objectives is gain a deeper awareness and appreciation of key personas, understand current practices, experiences, and challenges, develop an understanding of the problems carefully in order to solve them efficiently and apply solutions and how everyone can work together and summarize next steps. This is how we actually do it uh, at IBM. I just want to take a time to check. Oh. Okay. So, okay. So the first thing we do is when we do when we get into a workshop in our world of design thinking, is we come up, what we do is we gather again, we gather the research, right? Is we ask the people that we're doing the workshop, what are the problems that you're trying to solve? What is the problem statement that you're trying to come up with? And this is how you can effectively actually anyone can employ these 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 exercises, these tools. So by actually so you and your team and provides a focus on the specific needs that you have uncovered. Problems is uncovering the needs, and this is how we do it. And if you want to take your sticky and your iPad and your um, Sharpie, by all means start doing this. If you have a problem that you're trying to solve, it should be centered around the, the, the anatomies of problem statement. How might we? What problems need solving for, uh, or improve for who? Who is most affected by this problem? If you don't know who you're trying to solve for, you'll never come up with a, with a solution. An example is how might we provide a more personalized experience for job applicant based upon the preferred communication style? This is huge. Some people don't like to go on LinkedIn all the time. They want to get text messages. If you're a headhunter, right, do you always go through LinkedIn? There's there other ways of attracting top, um, top talent in, top talent in Canada. Another one is design a better way for who, for what, which persona is most affected for the problem that you want to solve. To what does the person need to be able to do? These are really key things that you have to that we identify when we're trying to go through this. An example is design a better way for a financial security analyst to immediately and effectively prioritize the most imminent threats. So 
these are problems that need to be solved, right? These are problems that we identify. These are actually real, these are real examples of problem statements that we came up with during our, our workshop. But what this does do is by framing it in the, by framing it in this context, we're able to quickly iterate faster. By using these words, words are so important, communication is so important, the art of storytelling is, is so important. Um, so design a better way for financial security analysts to immediately and effectively prioritize the most imminent threats. That is huge. They need to be able to do that. How can we solve this? How can we come up with, that, with ways of improving the financial security analyst's life much better and not get him to die at, uh, of a heart attack at 40? So this is what we do. We employ these techniques. We ask ourselves, what's the challenge the problem? We, do, we create, we actually uh, leverage metaphors. So we use a metaphor. It's kind of like, you know, a trusted best friend. <coughs> The person or group who are addressing is currently in a struggle. Where is the struggle? Where are they suffering? In a perfect world, they would be able to do what? This would be a why is it amazing? Ask yourself why. Are you really delivering something that will have a huge impact? These are all things to consider when you're coming up with, when you're trying to ideate around problem solving. So it consists of these little things. It's a stakeholder, a persona, a user, a customer, a need, and an insight. A recent graduate needs a way to develop a job hunting strategy and toolkit because he, she needs a better way to find income. It's pretty simple, right? But as you can see, these terms are really, they're very concise. She needs to come up, he or she needs to come up with a job hunting strategy. It's not finding a job, it's a strategy to come up with her the job that he or she will enjoy. And that's the differentiator. It's because she needs to find income, but she doesn't want to do it. He or she doesn't just want to do anything. They want to come up with a strategy in order to be most successful and effective. So then what you do is, in a, when we do a workshop, people hone in, they go into their groups, and they actually iterate around the problem that we have identified. And they personalize it into their own words. And that's how we do it. Then the second thing is empathy mapping. Who has created empathy mapping for? Okay, so those of you who have not created empathy, empathy I love empathy maps. They're awesome. I think they're the most, the greatest thing. It's my, one of my favorite stuff to do. So once you identify the problem, is you empathize around the person who has the problem. What are they thinking, doing, and feeling? Um, when I get into some kind of conflict or someone is rude to me, I ask myself, there may be something else going on in their lives that I'm not aware of. They may be suffering at home. They may be sick. I don't know. But by really understanding what a person is in the context of the problem they're trying to solve, what are they thinking and feeling and doing in that context, you'll be able to uncover a lot of insight. So this is why we do it. This is why we empathize. It's because people see different things. Who here sees an old lady? Who here sees a young lady? Who here sees both? Okay, so this is the mouth of the old lady, her chin. And this is the, the jaw and the nose and the ear of the young lady. But we all see different things. That's why everyone contributes to the empathy map. Because you're all giving in different feedback. You're all actually giving different insights because no two people are exactly the same. And so empathy is the action of understanding, being aware, of being sensitive, and vicariously experience the feelings, thoughts of another. What we like to do in our workshops is we always like to have someone who represents that person there so we can interview them. This is one of my favorite quotes in the world. It's not what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that ain't so. We have this ability as human beings to always want to confirm our biases. We have a neighbor in the South that actually does this relentlessly. A whole bunch of names. And he, uh, you know, fake news. <clears throat> fake news. Tendency to search for interpreters and call information in a way that confirms one's beliefs or hypothesis. We shouldn't be doing this. It's not a great way of um, uh, leading a, a country. Anyway. So, how we do it is we actually have these big post its, and I'll give you an example. We write out we, we write out the person's name, we always give them a name, and we say, what are they saying, thinking, feeling, and doing? And that's, this is an empathy map. This is how we create empathy towards the person. And then we put up ideas in terms of what we think they're thinking, doing, and feeling um, within the context of the problem that we're trying to solve. Here's an example. 
of, um, of uh, Clarice the bank teller, what she's thinking, doing, and feeling within her everyday work. And you can see there's a lot of insights that come up. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known that she, you know, that she uses, um, you know, that they try vendor products. This is stuff that you uncover while you're doing it. And it gives you an enormous amount of insights. So these three, why are these four areas? Because here you have how do they express themselves? It's important. So you have quotes, reactions, and expectations. What are their values? Everyone's values are really important. What are the actions that they do in their current role? This provides an, an, an incredible amount of insight in order to solve problems. And at the end of the day, you come up with something that looks like this. And then you actually, um, we, what we do is we cluster in a theme. This is like, this is to do. This is um, uncertainty. So these are all stuff that we uncovered while trying to empathize with the customer and the user that we had in mind. And then here's another way of doing it. You know, then we just put it into groups. Sometimes they look like this. They're extremely messy. But this is an empathy model. And then after that, after we've uncovered all that information, we create an as scenario. See, once we've understood what our persona is about, we create an uh, as a scenario. As a scenario is the steps that they take within the role that they have today, within their job, within the problem that they're trying to solve. It could be a service, it could be a product, it could be anything in the world. We were, I did a workshop once, it was fascinating with them, with the university. And it was a research uh, proposal we wanted to kick off, and they didn't know where to start. That was it. Um, we did stuff for government as well. So by identifying the steps that they take and really uncovering some information, what they're doing within those steps, it, cr it creates a, a, a huge amount of insight. Here, normally, uh, 9 out of 10, the first and the last step, you won't, there's not that much problems. It's always in the in-between that you have. So if you look at what they're feeling, this is why we do it, anxious, forgetful, prepared. So the idea is if you actually, if, if a travel agency fix, fixes the planning phase, they're going to make it much easier for people to actually plan vacation. Because this is where a lot of anxiety comes in. Nervous and tired. Well, that's, you know, you can't, can you really do a lot there while they're traveling? No. But you can simplify this step, right? You can actually create something that simplifies this step where they can find a babysitter faster, where they can actually book a flight faster, easier, better experience with all of this. This is where you have the most potential to fix the problem for this woman who's trying to book a flight for her and her husband, a trip for her and her husband for their anniversary. And this is how we use, we use, you know, we use, um, it's being special, we use, you know, we use drawings, visual uh, iconography is hugely, is, is very powerful, it actually relays information, and people understand it. This I know, this is, this is not good, look at that face, right? I don't need to write it out. So these are the steps that it takes. So what we do is we identify, after all that, we identify the most, uh, the most areas for improvement. Some good candidates are step, um, extra or necessary steps, points of inefficiency, points of confusion, pain points. The feeling is where you'll really get up. Remember, we're, 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 actually, we're actually fueled by our emotion, not reason. And then we identify the pain points, as I said before. This is how we do it. People vote. We get six stickies each. And after we've done all that, we ideate around it. We ideate solutions to come up with trying to solve the problem. But we don't create features. We create better ideas. And then we come up with the, the ideas are rooted in, in experiences. It could be kind of feel like trusted best friend. Nowhere does it say this idea does not talk about a solution. It talks about an experience. The ideation is centered around creating better experience for a user. It is not centered around creating a bridge, creating a better way for people to get from one side to the other. So these are some ideas. The dorm R R R A welcomes you, sets you up, connects you with your peers, helps helps when needed. And the taxi driver. And then we come up with a sketch, a headline, and a caption. This is how we do it. This is how we come up with uh, big ideas. And we ask each team to come up with five, and then we prioritize. I know I'm going through this really fast. Normally, these these talks I give through I give like a, uh, a much longer time, but I'm trying to go through as much as possible. Um, and then what we do is we actually vote on what has the most impact and what has the most feasibility in terms of the big ideas that we came up with. So in the room, you have ideas everywhere. And everyone comes up with ideas. Everyone gets to vote on which idea has the most potential that they can carry forward as a team, 
as an organization, as um, anything, you name it. I mean, the sky's the limit. Is it very feasible? A lot of times in government, of course, and also universities, is it feasible politically? Can we politically do this? We always ask that question, especially in, in education and in any government body. Does it improve the personas? And then we, the impact is so important because does it turn a pain point into a delight? Does it expand the user value? Does it improve the persona's experience? These are all kind of experience-driven ideas. And then the um, and then the feasibility is something that needs to be uh, first. It's something that can't wait. Can we do it as an organization? Can we get buy-in? Who else needs to come into the picture to, in order to get, to get this done? And this is how we um, this is how we do it. We put it on a on a chart like this, on an axis, and then we just say, okay, this is the most feasible. This is you know this area up there is people focus on that. And then after you do that, so here is some obvious, this is how we, we charted out the prioritization grid. Obvious choices, of course, are there, tough decisions, and then you ignore these for now. You're like, okay, I'm not gonna focus on this. Because everything also, and the reason why we do this is because you now, because everything is going so fast, you really don't want to give yourself a timeline of more than a year. Because you know that in six months down the road, technology, everything's gonna change. It's gonna keep getting different. So you have to be very agile. You need to be agile. If you're not agile, then I don't need to go into the reasons why. And then you storyboard. Again, tell them a story, um, explain some new technology, change in process, or how personas work together. The, the story is from the user's standpoint. standpoint. The story represents is presented through a series of six frames with pictures, thought bubbles, and action bursts. So this is how storyboards look like. And this is an example of a storyboard that actually we created in one of our workshops. This is a real storyboard. As you can see, it's really about, you know, she wakes up in the morning, now she can go to bed, um, you know, she can go to bed feeling at ease. Another one. Gains trust. This is really about gain a trust. So <clears throat> this is how it looks like. The storyboard contains these elements. Each team makes their own storyboard. It tells a seamless story with the beginning, middle, and end. It has characters, a plot, conflict, and a resolution. It's human-centered, focuses on the user rather than the screens. It's comic book, it's fun. We have CEOs of the largest corporations do this. It's very funny to watch them. But they love it. They love it. They really enjoy it. And then they, then they as a team, it's very team-oriented. Everyone gets together and they discuss which ones, you know, which storyboards you think, as a team, you think worked best. And then you converge to create one master story. And then you have playbacks. And playbacks are meetings used, as I said in the beginning, I won't go through this again, but it's just really, playbacks are so important. A culture of showing versus telling, or telling, showing in the sense of telling that story. I'm gonna give you an example. Hopefully it works. No. Okay, yes. There's no sound. How you the There's no sound. Okay. So I won't give you this great, I love this site, it's such a great example. Um, type in Google uh, Paris and Love. For those of you have your devices, you know how this will Google Paris and Love, those of you if those of you who have um, smartphones, it's a great thing. What it is doing, it's an ad that was aired on during the Super Bowl in 2011, and it shows every single feature of Google as a story. It had a beginning, a middle, and end. It was one of the most successful ads that Google ever, ever put on the market. And it was aired during the Super Bowl, imagine this, because it actually went into the emotional level of people. After that, of course, I don't need to say, I don't need to reiterate how successful Google is today. Anyway. How do you attribute the success of the ad? Because what it did, it was one of the first ads, it actually was very, it was very, it was very, people can relate to it. So what it did is actually told the story of this guy who went to Paris for the first time on a trip. And he met a girl and he fell in love and then he had to do translations. He wanted to look for a, a, a church. So he looked for a church, Google Maps, right? And then he had to look for flight information, so Google flight information. 
And then at the end, you can see he's typing in all this is doing, all he's doing is typing in, um, in the Google search. And then at the end, it's like, it's a crib, right? They got married and it's a little crib. It's a very, it's a very cute little story. But it actually showed everything that Google could do without even showing it was seamless. It was like almost, um, you didn't need to know what, what those features were. You, you knew it just by instinct. As he was doing that, all of his, you were actually able to relate his experience. It was an emotional story. You were able to relate to it. Cool, I can check my flights. Cool, I can actually Google Translate. People after that ad were using Translate by, it, the, the usage of uh, Google Translate were not by, I think, 200% after that, that Super Bowl ad. People were booking flights more often with Google than ever before after that ad. Um, their shares were not by, I don't know, who has Google shares anymore. Sorry, who is this Google you got into? I haven't heard of them. <laughs> Does anyone not know who Google is? And then at the end, what, how, design, how IBM's design thinking varies from other design thinking is that afterwards at the end of a workshop, we, we, we have everyone align and we ask everyone what are the to-dos, how can we make this successful, what are the things that we need to do as a team, as an organization, in order to march, in order to make this a reality. It's not, so, you know, it's not some kind of fun day that we came up with, how do we turn all this into something real? Um, I can give you many, many examples of companies that we've worked with that have actually used this to, to, to create products and services around the world, um, even startups as well. And this is how a to-do looks like. What further research needs to be happened? Who needs to be brought into the loop? What stakeholders need to be aligned? What unanswered questions need to be resolved? What milestones need, need to be scheduled? And as we assign names, 30, 60, and 90 days, we never go past that. Just because things change, you have to be agile. The more agile, the more nimble you are, the more you're effectively responding to change in the marketplace, in the technology space, and everything. As I said before, LinkedIn can't even keep up with the number of job um, titles coming onto the market. And this is how it looks like. So you start here, and then you end there. And that's how a typical workshop um, works. And then you reflection and wrap up. These are things, things that work, things that change, and you ask for feedback. So this is a typical workshop. This is how we use design thinking um, at IBM and with our companies and our partners and so on and so forth. Um, Star to come in and talk a little bit about uh, Watson and the, the, the technology aspect. But does anyone have any questions before I do that? Oh, yes. I saw lots of activities. I think you labeled them as activities. Yeah. How do you associate the goals and objectives with everything that you just described? Because all I see is a lot of stuff happening, but the other um, ones aren't clear. No, you're, you're right. So what we do is the first, uh, when we, at the onset of every workshop, we clearly outline the goals and objectives of the workshop. So we can share it. And it's actually posted on the wall. What are the goals and objectives? We will never enter a workshop without the goals and objectives. And, what, and then we, what we do is we have a lot of free work with the companies. And we ask them, what are the desired outcomes? What do you want to get out of this? So it's not so fluffy, right? Because it has to be action driven. If it's not action driven, then we won't do it. We'll say sorry. But action driven means activity. No, action driven is mean, there's a goal to it, there's an okay. end result to it. What we do is we create a playback, we create a kind of like a booklet, and we present it to the company that we're working with. Yes. So how does that happen? We can't, we can't we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, Yes. I'm curious um, about your experience in applying this method uh, between consumer products and industrial products. Let me answer. Yeah, here. She is amazing. I went for, uh, for McDonald's and Cineplex oh, workshop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the result was uh, amazing between the customer and us. Seriously, the result of each workshop of design thinking, it will be some project or some out of thinking. It is outstanding. And all is coming from the people who participated in that workshop. And all of the end she is doing here, she just organized the thought and the thinking and the doing. And by the way, in IBM, seriously, we in every project we are running design thinking nowadays. Because this is how we come up with the offering. This is we come up with a new era and a new thought and a new technique. And thank you so much for the meeting. Thank you so much for, for your time.
Yes. Anyone you like to eat pizza? It's fine with me. If you can grab your pizza again. It's fine. Hi everyone. My name is Sarmad. I am with IBM 10 years. I'm technology of adventurous for Watson and artificial intelligence, programming, programming, as well as Bluemix, the cloud platform of, of IBM. I am lucky to be in this part, uh, in this part of business with IBM because this is all about change. And today here we are changing our thinking. Our, our methodology in life, because this is a new era where we talk about artificial intelligence. And this is serious. Why, why we introduce it in the government program? I just want to, I just want to talk a little bit about our program in IBM with the, with the OCE, with the Ontario Center of Excellency. Uh, what, we, what we are offering here is $120,000 for a startup. How many co-founders here and how many startups here? New business, excellent. New business, small company, all included in this program. Okay, anyone who you would like to apply, you can contact me direct or contact Ron to be I of I3 program of the government program. We are giving hundred twenty thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar a month to a credit to use Bloomix and Boston. This is really a gift in Canada government. This is a gift from Canada government to the entrepreneur to help. To, to encourage them to do business. And we are so lucky to have this team. And and be, be sure that all what I am and the young, our, our goal is to create a successful entrepreneur, to create a successful experience. And let's talk about artificial intelligence, what we can do with this project, and how you can utilize your $120,000. Okay? Uh, we do have something called IBM Cloud Platform, which is a new mix. It is equivalent to AWS, to Azure, to Microsoft, to Cloud, or to any other platform. But the unique thing here in IBM, we introduce Watson. Watson is our cognitive project. It is our artificial intelligence platform. And this is just 17 March 2017. It is a new Watson, all the API, Watson API, it is brand new project. No one start, very few company they are doing it nowadays. Uh, and we are lucky to be here, we are lucky to be here to, to start applying it. And let me give you an idea about what we can do. Before we want to do any app, it took us a long time. And it took us really seriously coding, programming, and it's so hard. Even me, I couldn't do a single app. I have a lot of thought to do an app, a new app, a new application, but I said it's really forget it. It's so hard to do the code, so hard to think about it, how to do it, I don't know how. But nowadays, with Watson, with APIs, within five minutes, I will show you today how we can do an app. And then in five minutes, I will share with you. Not any, not any app. There is artificial intelligence app. That is the new era app. And in five minutes only, we can be proactive and we can do it. Leanne, she mentioned uh, the weather, uh, the weather uh, thermometers yeah. for homes. Yeah. And this is a new era. Guess what? How much, we, how much time we can do this in, in our WhatsApp? In 10 minutes, it's just we call the API weather, and that's it. It's so easy nowadays with our IoT of the platform, Internet of Things. Linking to the API for that. This is the this is the new way. Any application we want to do, we link it to API, and this API to call, for example, the weather, the location from Google, for example, the auto insurance. If you wanna, if you wanna do any new idea about car, for example, analytics from API. All this you can now present it in a small new application, and you can create that in your phone or in your application. And when we talk about Bluemix, this is our cloud platform. I, I know this is a complex slide, but this is what we have for you. And this slide is the magic, by the way. We can do many, many things. And most of it is a brand new. It is like the web, the data, the mobile cognitive analytic. IoT, security, before it is not possible. 
is needed even out of the dreams. It took two years to three years to develop IRT program, or it took years to do a cognitive program for emotion or for any 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 machine learning uh, any machine learning programs. But here with with the Bluemix, what we what we are able to do. Bluemix is it's not only about creating server and laptop uh, on the cloud or storage or network, because now we introduce many, many activity for that one, which is you can do almost from A to Z to make your company successful, and especially for a startup. And guess what? We are providing the money, the credit, to help you to start your business by, by, by doing that. No other company will help you like the way IBM they design the platform to help the startup and entrepreneur to do their business. Then if you want to come up, and I will share with you many use cases for a small business, what they've done and how they make money. And the good idea is how we can make millions, not any money, by using artificial intelligence, because the product it can help us to do that. And uh, we uh, after a while, I will share with you the actual Bluemix platform. This is the uh, this is the uh, <clears throat> the grade of service we, what we have in IBM. IBM is an enterprise scale company. Our our business is always with, with the biggest company in Canada and in the world. Uh, in Canada like TV brands or our business like uh, you know the ministries, the uh, Fortune 500 companies. We bring this business for startup too. The same platform, what we are serving the big business, we are we are introducing it to, to small business. Then you can take advantage and start doing your application by utilizing this platform. And if you have any idea or any uh, tech, if, or you want to implement any new idea or you want to increase the added value of your company, this is the solution for you. And part of it. This is the compute, everyone has compute. Network, storage, I expect everyone has some basic information about it, it's available. Also the application, the mobile, it is all, and the software, it is all technologies. It's not something in you. But here what we have in you is Watson. Watson is the machine learning, is the capability of, of the future. It, there is many features in Watson, we can be innovative. And that's why we call it innovative team. It's all about uh, what we can do with tone analyzer, uh, visual recognition, speech to text. All of these features, it is, it is the new era. And let me give you an example of visual recognition. For example, the last one, I will start from here in Watson. Visual recognition before, when we have a picture or a photo inside our computer, it is about pixels and the size. That's the computer view with pictures as a size, as how many pixels there. And this is this is all about for a computer. But nowadays with Watson, we understand what is inside the photo. Watson, he will know what is this photo about. If you take photo for car damage, it will send it to the insurance. They can calculate uh, and uh, they can calculate and they give you a receipt, uh, a receipt for that. If you are talking about uh, missing dogs, it can find and recognize your dog. And many, 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 many features for. When they, when they start their company to do, start a new business, a new startup, just to doing, uh, effectively just doing the visual recognition. We have a couple of uh, invention here also for data analytics and big data. Big data is, is game of IBM. And analytic of the, of the data and predict for the future is IBM, is IBM core business. That's why do you see the data and analytics? We have many, many features. And we introduce a new way, which is we call it asset structure database. Before the database, you create a column and you put uh, data, uh, structured data, and you create a query to report that data. But nowadays with IBM, what we create, we create many, many unstructured data we can upload to, to Watson, and mainly it's no SQL. And like MongoDB, also we can utilize in our database. And this it can you can upload document PDF, you can upload a graph, you can upload Word document, and any any type of documentation Excel sheet. 
guess what? The computer can understand the relation between the decimal. This is the new, the new way. Then we don't need in the future like SQL. We don't need, uh, we don't need any more structured database. If we have a strong and structured database, that's and uh, we are talking about millions of documents. Let's say 30 to 40 million documents is fine with us. This is very quick what we have offered for the entrepreneur and for the startup company. My uh, my main point is is the uh, the discovery, visual recognition, natural language, speech vision, trade of analysis, and retrieve and rank. All this capability available to create a new application and a new way. Because the old software was available, let's take an example, the ERP system. ERP system, the HR system, available in every company, big company, small company, they pay million for that software. But with the new artificial intelligence, we introduce a new way. This is it's just about more uh, personalization, it's about more understanding, and it is artificial intelligence. If we know the employee, we know their history, then we know everything about them. And but you can deal with it by speech, by any new way you can you can you can think. And this is what, what we call the cognitive thinking. Cognitive thinking is about memory, it's about people how they react, problem solving. And this capability we give it to, to Watson to enable your software or new ideas to have the capability of a problem solving, the capability of thinking, the capability of memory. And this is what we introduce in discovery, some capability for discovery. This is what we have for for cognitive. And I want to share, I want to share with you, this is the IBM Innovation Space in Toronto. And this is where we started. We're taking the value of experienced business with new innovators and creating something absolutely unique. This is our team. just a space, a connection. And because there's new walls, new startups can engage. We want that person that works at a big bank or that marketing executive to be in the room. That collaborative environment is going to help bring fresh ideas with the maturity of a big business in Canada. Sometimes it's just a word of advice. Sometimes it's a name that they should call. Sometimes it's just reinforcing their idea. That type of interaction is the difference maker. The challenge is not what the government's investing and what academia is investing. It's what industry is doing to help evolve those businesses. We're going to take pride not only in building the IBM company, but the journey that these new businesses are going to go on. Now let's jump into the project itself. How many people they have account with the Bluemix? Okay, good. Good. We have a couple here. That sounds good. I want to show you what we are talking about and what we are offering in this, in this uh, event. This is the Bluemix itself. When you log in, you will see all the capabilities available for you. You can build a computer, you can build a VM machine uh, using Microsoft, you can build a storage there, and you can add all the company uh, files there. This is the computer, this is the storage, it's available for you. And uh, we will pay for that for the startup. IBM it will pay, this is the real money. And also we have, uh, if you want to establish your new website, also, we have an API. You can you, are, you can have a free website. We are paying for it. Then, when you establish new website, we are using WordPress, and you can utilize it too. Uh, what we have here also, we have WhatsApp capability, and this is what I want to introduce because I think this is the uh, this is the innovative where you can make ma many uh, nice ideas or nice apps uh, within no time. If you if you take the, if you take a look how we design it, we design a conversation, discovery. Discovery has the engine and the mastermind thinking like a human. And discovery can upload any document, it can read them and understand what you did. When we do that, that's what we mean. If you upload the document about uh, certain skills, 
okay, like a doctor. It will understand everything. And this is we're talking about million of the you know, you Then you can make a decision like a doctor. You can train it, you can talk to it through speech recognition, and then you start you start dealing with it. And to build that up, there is no no too much uh, time to do that. You can do it immediately. Let me show you how we can do it. Let me create an app with visual recognition. This is this is how it would like. I'll give a name, visual recognition. Let's give a company name or my name. And we create that. There you go, visual recognition server. Immediately we create an app that is doing uh, what is doing visual recognition in no time. And just putting the name of the app, and here you go, you have a complete app. And let's see this full documentation, uh, full documentation available. And if you can see the URL, the URL is a new URL for demo. And this is the services what we can do. Now we can train the app, of course, the artificial intelligence, all the machine learning is about training. How we can train and let's have uh, let's do some I will select a photo, a photo randomly to understand, to look, to take a look how the computer understands the photo. I just pick a photo from my desktop, my photo, my personal photos, and let's take a look. I have no idea which photo I select. I hope it's good. Okay. Watson was doing is taking the image, classifying the image, and take a look. And happened this, uh, this image, I did it like this weekend for my son. Now, do you see the result? The result, it will, it will give you all the details of the result. Female child, female 60%, person 71%, valuable, maybe there is a pair, maybe code date. I know the information maybe is not accurate 100%, but we can train Watson, what is inside the photo, every time we run it, it gives us better result. And this is the way how it works. Now, the age of, of the team, age from 18 to 24, female zero, age 35 to 45, male. And this is, we can say no or no, yes or no, for the result to train it. But my, my point is, now we can, we can tell what is inside the photo. One of the, one of the examples, one company they are doing uh, they are doing uh, paint uh, for houses, and they like to calculate the size of the house. And every time they go, they, they do the measurement, and it take them extra job to do that. But by the owner, if he take photo now the new way, the owner he take photo, and they send it to the to Watson app. Immediately, it can give the sizes. That's why we use effort, we use time. This is one of the examples we are doing it in Toronto. But if you're asking, you have to figure out the scale. Right? That's, that's why it is not accurate now unless I train it. There is a yes and no. Uh, I say no until I get an, uh, an accurate result. Okay, it's by time because this is the first time I'm uploading the photo. It give me it give me a result like this. If you say yes every time, if you say no, until you get the accurate re result, that's it. You will get accuracy up to 90%. Still, there is there is here and there, but we can train it. All the all the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, you need to train the system to get the accurate result. And this is how the good news is: we can create the app in no time. That's what I did. I just push button, one push button. That's it. That's all what I did. No language, nothing. And by the way, if you want to change it, if you want to put your company names. If you want to add, you know, your company or photo, anything that's related to you, your text, it is in JSON language, for example. 
You can just take that code, add a couple of lines, and that's it. You can put your company. It's all open source. I want to talk about IBM Watson Academy. For all of this stuff, we have something uh, called IBM Watson Academy. And this is uh, free for entrepreneurs and startups. If you register to I3 program, I will be able to give you access for that. It's not, it's not open, not for everyone, but the company who register with the I3 program, we can give them the capability to access the Watson Academy has thousands of video courses, how, how, to do, uh, how, how to deal with this platform. Second, we, but we have also, we have learning lab. Because artificial intelligence is a new idea and people they need uh, to test to some lab. And we have a complete lab for all our projects. It's a free, you can, you can use it, you can utilize it. Millions of documents available. And how we done that? By the way, uh, in IBM, 23,000 developers, they work together to produce Watson. 23,000 employees, they produce Watson. And everything is documented, and all the documented is here. And the training lab, very nice one, is available, you can utilize it, use it, until you come up with a complete project. <coughs> We have also something called uh, Lubix Garage. And what they've done, great job, is if you, have, if you want to establish a new company, you need an architect, you need, uh, you need to organize the whole idea, and they come up with a method. They make everything available for you, from the architect, to the cognitive idea, to the microservices, to the code. Even the code, the code is available, cut and paste. That's all what you need to do, cut and paste. We encourage that, <laughs> we encourage that. All the data analytics, the mobile, the IoT concept, thousands of programs as samples for you to copy and paste them. Then you can utilize them, use them for your new company or your new ideas. That's what we call uh, garage. Also, what we have uh, amazing marketplace case studies, and there's a thousands of case studies. You can just write your business and see what you what you can come up with a new idea, come up with a new uh, with a new technique. This is where you can find for every business. Just write down your small business and what you want to achieve. You can find similar things, and when you find something something similar. You will amaze how, how you can do it easily. It's not very hard. This is called we call the Adidas programming. Too much programming. There's a program. Yes. Yeah. We have many examples and use cases, but I want to share a couple of them. Like in news intelligence, we give all the code is available, everything is available. Also, I'm checking that as an example. This is the news intelligence. If we want to write about what? About any company. Let's go, let's pick one, eBay. This is a new way of searching about, this is a new way of to search about the company. And you, you will have, this is Watson, how he search the information about eBay, for example. It will give all the information uh, about what's going on with, this, with eBay, for example, in the news. It is positive, it is negative. It gives a complete report about trend and how, what is, uh, what's going on with that company, if it is positive or it is negative and where, where, you, where you can find about eBay more information. This is the way how, how you look to every company information, what's going on with that company in the news. And to do that, they, Watson has the capability to search thousands and millions of articles. 
to, to give that type of result. And this is the new capability. You can utilize it for your own business also. You think about new idea, you can immediately use Watson and you can train it according to the, your business ideas. But this is the capability. It's so easy to do. It's not hard to make it happen. I want to give more examples about social customer care. One of the applications we are utilizing here, personality, personality inside, natural language classifier, tone analyzer. And when we do, for example, personality inside, we give us about the person, like fortune teller, tell you about the person, what he's doing. And this is the result. It can classify people, it can, you can find more information about customer care, and many, many, sorry, but I want to share more example what the company they are doing with this service. Where's the customer, knowledge base search, um, answer retrievals, can retrieve any answer. There is, uh, yeah, I want to I wanna share this one with you also. There is an IoT uh, concept. If anyone has a company or any idea, you can talk to me about the IoT. You have very strong capability. This is, if you want to invest your money, you will have many experts where they understand the, uh, they are expert in money uh, transaction. You can just pick any one of them and you can look to their personality. And this is the way, this is the personality chart, how we have it. It is awesome. And imagine we can put your name also. If we did our, if we dig about your personality through Twitter, through Facebook, also we will come to the same result. Then it is, it is open source. It is, you can utilize it also for yourself too. This is the personality summary. Then Watson is capable to know people. It's capable to know company. It's capable to know, to, 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 to think and decide, this is all about. But we have an example also, Designer Match. This is one company, they are doing selling their project. Let's open the app. This is inside their website. We think they are using Watson. Let's say I am a man. Okay, and I'll put my Twitter to analyze my personality. He will pick for me the product that I like. Find my match. Immediately from my personality, you'll understand what I like, and he give me what I like. Oh, all the black and white. That's very bad. That is nice. <laughs> and he give me my personality too. To give me all the information. Imagine this website, which is normal website for who knows this one. I don't know this one. This is from America. This is normal shop. It can do. It can give the personality and it can give more personalization for my test. This is the website. The idea is we can link Watson to any website. We can link Watson to any company. And you can utilize the API. You just send an API, here you go. You have amazing new type of result. Amazing personalization, amazing new thinking, and also he can make a decision. He can decide. Many of the idea we have today, it is, how, uh, it is possible to do. This is the new, the new era. That's the, this is something is really exciting. And guess what? When you, for one year, already IBM is will pay $120,000 for you just to use it, just to understand. And also you can sell it, you can make money out of it, it's fun. And this is this is the help we are we are providing through the program, IT program. Thank you for everyone. Thank you. We are staying here for if you have any question, we are here. We will stay here for one hour. Just to listen, if you are, if you want to apply, how, how to apply, we have all the detail for you. Okay.
Thanks so much, everyone, for coming out. Um, we are holding our next event in about a month on the 24th. Yes. 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 IBM will be here again. Um, so next month's a quieter month for Data Hub events. We'll be launching uh, 2017 to 2018 uh, talks at Data Hub in September. So look for a big event in September. So, anyway, thanks a Thank <laughs> you.